Chapter 2371 Waylon smiled. As long as you don't mind. Minzy paused, then smiled. Of course I don't. Waylon looked at his watch and said, It's getting late. I'm heading home. Minzy nodded. After he left, Minzy's eyes shone. When Waylon got back to Emperon, it was already 10.30 p.m. He switched off the lights in the living room, went upstairs, and noticed the light coming from under the door, lighting up a small part of the dark corridor. Is she still awake? Waylon knocked, but there was no response. He pushed the door open and was shocked at the sight. Cameron was sleeping with her long legs crossed on the blanket. Half the blanket was on the floor while she wore a silky nightgown that might expose too much if she moved. He clenched his jaw. Was she testing his self-control? It wasn't that great. Waylon stopped by the bed, leaned down, rested his hands on both sides, and planted a kiss on her lips without hesitation. Her eyes moved while she mumbled something. Waylon kissed deeper. Cameron woke up from her dream and was out of breath as she opened her eyes and pressed her hands on his chest. Call. Cameron swallowed the rest of her sentence. They were both tangled up. Cameron was gasping for air over his shoulder and kicked him when she saw who it was. Waylon was caught off guard and fell off the bed. Cameron wrapped herself up with the blanket and looked at him. You're... Wayne. He covered his face with his hand when he realized she thought she had seen someone else, and that was why she was shocked. After confirming that it was Waylon, she almost burst out crying. You. You scared me. Are you crazy? I thought you were. Waylon sat on the floor and messed up his hair. He laughed. He must be sneezing right now. I guess it was my fault. I didn't mean to. Cameron got out of bed to help him up. I was still groggy and saw. These were just my reflexes. After saying that, she wiped off the mole under his eye. You drew it on. Why did you pretend to be your brother? Is it fun to scare me? Waylon grabbed her chin and smiled. Even Minzy could tell that it was me. Are you trying to make me angry? She pouted. I'm sorry. She suddenly realized what he had said, so she looked up and squinted. You met Minzy again? Waylon brushed his shirt and raised his brows. Are you so possessive? I can't meet other women? Cameron didn't know whether it was possessiveness. All she knew was that she didn't like him meeting Minzy. She replied, you can meet anyone except her. He smiled. Why? Cameron turned her face away. No reason. Waylon squinted. She cared because she probably saw Minzy as her rival. But that wasn't enough for him. Not only did he want her to be jealous, but he also wanted her to grab hold of him and keep him for herself. I can't do that then. My brother has business dealings with the Kong ports. Waylon leaned down closer to her with a smirk. Mr. Holland is the person we work with, so I can't avoid meeting Minzy. Cameron was annoyed. Get your brother to go. He left the country and won't be back soon. Waylon stood up straight and casually unbuttoned his sleeves. Go back to sleep. I have to meet them again for a business meeting tomorrow morning. Chapter 2372 Waylon left the room. Cameron frowned and fell deep in thought. Meanwhile, it was afternoon in Yaramore. Freya returned from her lectures. She wasn't very comfortable leaving Colton and her father together because she knew Colton didn't like her father. Her father was a softy, so it would be a disaster if Colton made him cry. She took out her keys, opened the door, and was immediately hit by the smell of alcohol. The two men had gotten some snacks and started drinking. They had finished up two dozen bottles of beer. Brandon had even taken out two bottles of wine that they were keeping. One of them was already empty while the other had less than one-third left. Maybe he had drunk a little too much as he was crying like a child while holding Colton and an empty bottle. He said he felt sorry about this and that, as well as that he was useless. Colton had drunk a lot as well and was resting his head on his hand, not listening to what Brandon was saying. 
Colton poured him more wine because he was annoyed by the crying. Stop crying. Start drinking. Burp. What? Am I the only one who's drinking? No way, you drink some too. Brandon's eyes couldn't focus, and the hand that was pouring was shaking. He even bumped into the empty beer bottles on the table. They fell to the ground with a clang. Brandon got up to get more alcohol and stumbled, then fell next to the table and started snoring. Freya looked at them in the messy living room, and she was livid. When Colton woke up, it was almost morning. He remembered something and sat up, but the table was already clean. Brandon was asleep on the couch next to him. Freya walked down the stairs in her pajamas. Oh, you're awake. I thought you'd be asleep till morning. Freya, have you had dinner? Haha, <laughs> I finally know why people say men can't be trusted. Freya crossed her arms. If I waited for you to cook, I would have starved to death. Colton rubbed his temples, stood up, and walked to her. I'm sorry. I promise it won't happen again. Freya pushed him away. Are you sure? He nodded. Freya turned to look at Brandon. Well, Mr. Goldman, please carry my father back to his room. That's what happens when you make him drunk. She then turned to go upstairs, remembered something, and stopped in her tracks. I'm afraid you have to sleep on the floor tonight. Colton had no retort. After getting Brandon in bed, Colton returned to his room and realized that Freya had placed some sheets and a blanket on the floor. She then tossed the pillow to him. Sleep on the floor. Something came to his mind, and he tossed the pillow back and quickly walked behind her to hug her. Do you really want me to? Yes. Let go. He chuckled. I'm supposed to do as you say? Freya tried to move his hand away, but couldn't. You smell terrible, don't hug me. He suddenly carried her in his arms and walked toward the bathroom. She was shocked. Why are you bringing me in? Shower. Colton closed the door. He didn't let her go from the bathroom to the bed until she was out of energy and fell asleep. Before she dozed off, the last thing on her mind was that she would never let Colton drink again. Chapter 2373 The next day When Freya woke up, her throat was dry, and she didn't have the energy to get out of bed. Colton brought breakfast in on a tray and saw the marks on her neck. He was very happy with his work. You're up quite early. He placed the food on the table. On top of the simple breakfast, there was a bowl of soup too. I was worried that you would be too tired, so I made you some soup. Freya was curious. Do people eat soup for breakfast? He sat on the bed, scooped up some soup, and blew on it. It will make you feel better. He brought the soup to her mouth, so she drank it, then pointed at the tray. I want the egg. Peel it for me. Colton placed the bowl down and did as she asked. He fed her before, but he would say something back along the lines that she was ordering him around. But now, his obedient attitude made her feel awkward. Realizing that she was staring at him, Colton looked up. What's wrong? Freya leaned in. Did you do something? Did you beat up my dad? Why are you so nice today? Colton had nothing to say, so he smiled. Freya, does it make you happier if we bicker? Why was he treating her weirdly? Freya smirked. You're not a gentle man. He placed down the cutlery, pinched her chin, and stared at her with sharp eyes. You like gentlemen? She looked at him. I like the real you. Colton was surprised because he wasn't expecting her to say that. He looked very serious, but was overjoyed in his heart. Eat your breakfast instead of flirting with me. Freya smiled and ate quietly, at Bassberg, at Black Gold. Cameron's car was parked outside the building while she rested on the steering wheel, but she hesitated about getting out. After finding out that Waylon would have to work with Minzy, she had to keep an eye on them. The guard walked over and knocked on the window. She rolled it down when the guard said, I'm sorry, miss, you can't park here. Okay. She was going to drive away, but she saw Waylon walking out of the building. 
The woman next to him was Minzy. She wore a short silk skirt, long white boots, and a fur coat. She looked exquisite yet gentle. She walked alongside Waylon, having a great chat. They walked to the car, and Waylon opened the door for her. Cameron grabbed the steering wheel, and her heart just felt uncomfortable. Was this how he worked with people? That was more like a date. She wanted to see where they were heading. After the car in front drove off, Cameron followed. Minzy looked at Waylon in the car and smiled. Thanks for driving me back. Waylon smiled. There's no need for that. We're working together, so I'm just being polite. Minzy smiled and didn't speak. Even though he was gentle and humble, she knew he was treating her that way because they had business dealings. It didn't mean anything else. He kept his distance and wasn't too friendly but wasn't too distant either. They were like friends, but there was a clear line. Chapter 2374 Minzy looked around. Even though Waylon didn't have feelings for her, she couldn't help but want to get his attention. He hadn't announced his relationship with Cameron, and they weren't married yet, so she assumed she still had a chance. Mr. Goldman, would you want to go catch a movie this weekend? I can't find anyone to go with me, and you're the only person I know in Basburg. Minzy shyly invited him. Waylon raised his brows and thought about it. The driver looked into the rearview mirror. Sir, there's a car that's following us. Waylon was calm and seemed to know who was in the car, so he curled his lips. Minzy turned around and looked nervous. Following us? Is it someone we know? Waylon didn't mind. Who knows? Maybe. When Minzy saw that he wasn't anxious about being followed, said it might be someone they knew, and was looking very calm and collected, she guessed that he knew who it was. She wanted to know if it was the person she thought it was. The car was parked at the main door of the hotel she was staying in. Minzy got out of the car, but didn't leave immediately. Instead, she asked, Would you like to have lunch with me? Waylon agreed. Sure. Cameron parked not far from there and saw them walk into the hotel. Her temper flared. I see how it is. This asshole is already dating someone else. Ha, huh, men. The restaurant had a calm ambience. It was decorated elegantly, and there weren't a lot of patrons. Waylon drummed his fingers on the table absent-mindedly as he looked at the elevator doors. Minzy cut into the steak but saw that he hadn't started. Mr. Goldman? He raised his brow slightly and smiled. Sorry, I'm not very hungry. That's all right. She smiled and said, after a long pause, are you expecting someone? Waylon's fingers froze, then he squinted and remained silent. Minzy didn't want to be too blunt because men didn't like women who were too smart. I was curious because I saw that you kept staring in the direction of the elevators. Waylon picked up his coffee cup and slowly took a sip. I guess, but I don't think she will come. Minzy looked down and didn't speak. A woman's gut feeling was rarely wrong. That person he was talking about was probably the woman in the car that was following them. It was most probably her. Waylon placed his cup down, looked at his phone screen, and slowly stood up. I think I should get going. Minzy stood up too. Let me walk you out. He didn't answer and was already walking toward the bill to pay. Minzy picked up her bag and followed along. Once they walked out of the hotel doors, Minzy called out to him. He paused and turned around. Yes? Minzy stopped in front of him and took out her phone. I didn't want you to pay for my meal. Let me wire the money to you. He smiled. It's fine. I'm buying. He proceeded to open the car door and sat down. Minzy watched while the car drove away, then pressed her lips together. Was he worried that Cameron might take this wrongly? She couldn't understand why he liked that woman. Cameron pretended to be a man on the East Islands, and everyone there called her, Sir. She didn't have the gentleness and softness of a woman as she had grown up among men. On the other hand, Minzy knew men better because no man could reject a gentle woman like her. Chapter 2375 
Waylon was the first man to reject her. He was also the first who never showed any admiration or thought about her. That was why she couldn't forget him even after returning to Kong Port. She felt that the men around her weren't even half as good as he was. Minzy sadly returned to her hotel and suddenly saw a flash. She paused and realized that someone was taking pictures of her. She was going to stop it when she suddenly remembered something and stopped in her tracks. Waylon returned to Emperon and saw that Cameron's shoes weren't there. He called her, but she didn't pick up. He guessed where she went, so he sent a text to Daisy. Meanwhile, at the Martial Arts Center. After reading the text from Waylon, Daisy turned to Cameron, who was punching the punching bag. When Cameron went to see her, Daisy had already guessed that it was because she had a spat with him. It must have been something serious to make her so angry. Daisy, what did you do? Waylon, Colton has a deal going on with the dominant group of Kongport. Minzy's father works with that company. I guess she was upset that I got so close to Minzy, Daisy's lips curled. She had tried to help him and gotten Minzy to trigger Cameron. She had been under the impression it was over, but she never thought that it would give Minzy an excuse to hang around him. That was why Cameron was furious. Daisy, we're at the Martial Arts Center. She's very upset, and I don't want to speak to her. I'm afraid she might hit me. Waylon, hold her back and don't let her take it out on other people. Send me your location, and I'll be there soon. Daisy sent their location to him. The one who made Cameron angry should be the one who made things right. Her fists landed hard on the punching bag. If it was replaced by a person, that person would be the unluckiest person on earth, and she couldn't imagine how bad it would be. Suddenly, a few men who were laughing walked into the area. The man leading them was a VIP member of the center. He was in a taekwondo uniform with a black belt. Everyone was very polite toward him and called him Mr. Selfridge. There weren't a lot of women in the center, so he touched his chin and asked when he saw Cameron punching the sandbag, who's the new chick? Another man paused, then shook his head. I don't know. It's the first time I'm seeing her. Conroy looked at Cameron. She has a good body. Must be a fighter. He smiled broadly and waved to signal them to leave. He then walked toward Cameron and placed his hand on her shoulder. Miss, are you training alone? Do you want me to train with you? Cameron stopped and turned to look at him. You? Yes. If you want to play, I can play with you the way you want to. Don't worry. I'm gentle to women. I can even teach you a thing or two. After saying that, Conroy moved his hand down to her arm. Even if she was a fighter, she was just a woman. In that place, his words were important. He would still take her down if she didn't listen to him. Cameron calmly moved his hand away. I don't need an amateur to train me. Conroy's smile faded. What did you say? Amateur? He turned to the person behind him, and that man chuckled. Girl, you can't call someone with a black belt in taekwondo an amateur. Are you a newbie? Chapter 2376 I guess I should show you what I'm capable of. Instead of calming them down, the onlookers joined the fray and worsened the situation. Cameron was already in a bad mood. Now that someone had offered himself to let her vent her spleen, her eyes instantly glowed up with happiness. Honestly, a black belt in Taekwondo is nothing. There's nothing to brag about. Conroy scoffed. He had never seen such an arrogant woman before. Girl, don't you think you've taken it a little bit too far? Crossing her arms in front of her chest, Cameron said, Ha, huh, bragging is for losers. A true master will never give their opponent any chance to fight back. Conroy finally flew into a rage after being repeatedly insulted by Cameron. He rolled his sleeves and said, I've already given you a chance, but you don't cherish it. It seems like I should teach you some manners today. Cameron raised her hand and said, Wait. Conroy thought Cameron was scared and laughed triumphantly. If you apologize to me now, I'll be the bigger person and forgive you. Otherwise, your fragile body may not be able to handle a single kick from me. He had won a prize in the international taekwondo competition. 
As for the skinny woman in front of him, she was just a beginner. He found it difficult to believe that she had the guts to look down on him. Cameron pointed at the people behind him and said, All of you can come at me together. The rest of the people were stunned. Conroy felt humiliated as he asked, What do you mean? Cameron tied her jacket around her waist and said apathetically, I'm worried that the fight will end too soon if you fight me alone. Don't worry. You can call in as many people as you want. The stronger the fighter, the better. Conroy scoffed. Girl, are you looking down on me? As soon as he finished speaking, the smile on his face disappeared as he punched Cameron without warning. He really wanted to teach Cameron a lesson this time. However, Cameron intercepted his punch without any difficulty and said indifferently, you're too slow. After that, she turned her body around and kicked Conroy to the ground. The people behind Conroy could not see her movements, and they were all shot. Conroy screamed out in pain. He looked at Cameron and hissed through gritted teeth. Bitch, you're dead. He broke himself free from Cameron and threw himself at her while starting to attack her frantically. It went without saying that Cameron wouldn't give him a chance. As if she could see through all of his moves, she dodged all of his attacks effortlessly. After that, she delivered kick after kick and punch after punch at Conroy, before ending the fight by jumping into the air and kicking him away. He flew across the air and landed on the ground in front of the people with a meaty smack. Those people were so scared that they all took a step back. Cameron dusted the invisible dust on her shirt and commented, So much for a black belt. You're such a disgrace to your master. Come, all of you can come at me together. They all helped Conroy to his feet. He grabbed his arm and was in a lot of pain. He glared at Cameron and snarled, What are you waiting for? Go get her. The group of people charged at Cameron. After Daisy finished her call with Waylon, she put her phone away and walked into the building. When she raised her head, she saw that Cameron had already defeated all of the people. She covered her face and shook her head. This was exactly what she was afraid would happen, and now it seemed to her that they were in big trouble. The group of cocky people had all fallen to the ground, writhing and wailing in pain. Cameron picked Conroy up from the ground. Conroy's face was all swollen up, and he could barely speak. How? How dare you beat me? Do you know who I am? I'll have my revenge soon. Cameron patted his cheek and said, I already said that you couldn't defeat me, but you didn't believe it. Cameron. Daisy walked over and looked at the people on the ground. What are you? Why are you making such a big commotion? When Conroy saw Daisy, he said, hurry up and ask her to let go of me. Otherwise, I won't let you go so easily. Cameron grabbed his collar and said, you failed to take advantage of me, and now you still have the arrogance to talk to me like that after getting beaten up by me? Chapter 2377 What? When Daisy heard what Cameron said, she looked at Conroy and asked, you tried to take advantage of her? How dare you? After she finished speaking, she delivered a kick at him, sending him to the ground. Cameron stopped Daisy when she was about to follow up with another kick. All right, all right. That's enough. I've already beaten him up. It'll be bullying if we continue to beat him. Meanwhile, someone came into the building. When he saw the scene in the building, he narrowed his eyes. What happened here? The moment Cameron saw Waylon, her anger flared up again, and she kicked Conroy. Daisy wanted to stop her, but she was too slow. Conroy was stunned for a moment. After regaining his senses, he cried out loud, Why did you kick me again? How can she bully me like this? Waylon hurriedly went forward and grabbed Cameron. All right, stop now. Cameron flung his hand away and said, It's none of your business. Waylon narrowed his eyes and said, It's none of my business? Then who's going to clean up your mess, huh? Daisy stood forward and explained, Waylon, it wasn't Cameron's fault. This guy tried to take advantage of her. Waylon pressed his lips tightly and looked at Conroy. All right. You two go out first. Daisy had an inkling of what Waylon was about to do, so she dragged Cameron out of the building. Waylon walked toward Conroy. 
Conroy covered his swollen face with his hand and could see the coldness in Waylon's eyes. He subconsciously moved backward. What? What do you want? I warn you. Don't mess with me. You'll regret it. Which hand did you use to touch her? Huh? Waylon expressionlessly grabbed his arm and asked again, Is it this one? Wha? Wait. Arg. The crowd heard a snap sound from the air as Waylon dislocated Conroy's arm. As he shouted out in pain, all of them swallowed hard. It appeared to them that today was definitely not the day for them. The people they met were more ruthless than one another. Waylon came out of the martial arts center. Daisy turned her head to look at him before turning back to Cameron. Then, she said with a smile, Well, I'm going back to the office. Cameron grabbed her arm and asked, I thought you said you were going to keep me company today? Daisy smiled. My brother is here. I'm sure he's more than willing to keep you company. I don't want him. Waylon lifted his eyebrows. Don't want me what? Cameron stared at him. Shut up. I didn't ask you to speak. He chuckled. You beat them up, and you're still angry? She harumphed coldly. It's none of your business. Waylon replied, of course, it's my business. Cameron pushed him away. Stay away from me, jerk. Waylon was caught between tears and laughter after he heard what Cameron called him. Since when did I become a jerk? Cameron crossed her arms in front of her chest and raised her chin. Ha, huh, you played with a girl's feelings and then cheated on her by starting a new relationship with another girl. If you're not a jerk, then who is? She had seen it with her own eyes. Not only did he send Minzy back to her hotel personally, but he also escorted her back to her room. If he was not a jerk, then who was? The more she thought about the marriage certificate that he had tricked her into getting, the angrier she became. Waylon suddenly grabbed her chin and leaned closer. Since when did I play with your feelings? Cameron was stunned for a moment as she looked at the man standing very close to her. It took her quite a while before she came around to her senses and pushed him away. Stay away from me. If not, I'll hit you. The smile on his face deepened. You can hit me all you want after we get home. I don't want to go home with you. Daisy, let's. Cameron turned her head around, but Daisy was nowhere to be seen. She left me with her brother just like that. Waylon grabbed her into his arms and said, Didn't you say you want to beat me? Let's go home now then. I don't want to go home with you. Let go of me, jerk. Cameron tried to free herself from Waylon's embrace, but Waylon just pushed her into the car. While they were on their way back, Cameron crossed her arms in front of her chest and looked outward through the window with her cheeks puffed like a puffer fish. Chapter 2378 Waylon turned his head to look at her. I can even smell your jealousy from here. Cameron refused to admit it and said, Who told you that I'm jealous? If you're not jealous, then why are you so angry, and why did you follow my car today? Cameron was stunned. She turned her head to look at him. You know I was following you today? He chuckled. Yeah. After all, no one else would do something like that aside from you. Cameron bit her lips and did not say anything. She did not know why she wanted to follow them either. Maybe she was angry, or maybe she just did not want Minzy to be so close to him? After a long while of silence, she suddenly asked, Is Miss Holland your type? Waylon frowned. Have I ever said that she is my type? No man would say no to a gentle and kind woman like her, right? It's okay. You can let me know if you like her. I can understand it. Waylon suddenly stamped on the accelerator, causing Cameron to hold tightly at the handle. What are you doing? He replied, let's go back first. They went all the way back to Emperon. As soon as Waylon brought her into the house, he pinned her on the wall, loosened his tie, and threw it to the floor. Before Cameron could realize anything, she was overwhelmed by Waylon's kisses. It was the most passionate kiss she had ever felt before. Cameron was gasping for air. She tried to push Waylon away, but to no avail. 
Waylon secured her tightly in his arms. He collected her hair behind her ears with his finger and buried his face in her shoulder. Does that answer your question? I won't behave this way with any woman. Cameron huffed heavily but did not say anything in return. He stroked the corner of her lips and said, Cam, I know that you have feelings for me. Her eyelashes trembled as she replied, No, I don't. Yes, you do, said Waylon. There was basically no distance between them, and she was enveloped in his breath. You want me. You want me for yourself. You want me to love you, and you only. She placed her hand on his chest and said, That's what you think. He kissed the corner of her eyes. Please, Cam. Stop lying to yourself. You know very well, that's what you think as well. Cameron pressed her lips tightly. She felt a tingling sensation as he trailed his kisses all over her. Cameron turned her face sideways and said, Stop it, Wayne. If you want to say something, then say it properly. Waylon pressed his forehead against hers and said in a hoary voice, I'm leaving if you don't answer me. She frowned. Are you threatening me? He released her and said, Forget about it. I won't force you anymore. If you don't have feelings for me, it won't change anything, even if I force you. He picked up his tie from the floor and turned around. Just when he was about to leave, Cameron tugged at the hem of his clothes. A smile appeared on his face, but he did not turn his head around. Cameron did not know why, but a voice inside her told her she shouldn't let him leave. She listened to the voice, and by the time she realized it, she had already stretched her arm forward and tugged at the hem of his clothes. She hastily released her hand and bit her lips. You can't go find her. He chuckled. Why? I just don't like seeing you two together. He turned around and looked at her intently. What if it's another woman? You can't go see other women either, Cameron said without any hesitation. The smile on Waylon's face deepened as he said, I thought you said I could go see any woman I liked as long as she wasn't Minzy? Wayne. Cameron rushed forward and grabbed his collar. If you dare to step out of this house, I... Waylon went closer to her and asked, You what? I'll kill you, she said. Waylon scooped her up from the floor and said, Well, since my wife says I can't go to another woman, I won't go then. Cameron punched his shoulder. Who is your wife? Do you have no shame? Put me down. He chuckled. We've already registered our marriage. If you're not my wife, then whose wife are you? Yeah, we've already registered our marriage, yet you still go to a hotel with another woman. Waylon put her on the couch and leaned down on her. He secured her in his arms and said, If I didn't give you some push, you'd never face your true feelings. You. Ugh. Chapter 2379 before Cameron could finish her sentence, Waylon kissed her again. When Conroy's parents learned that Conroy was rushed to the hospital after getting beaten up by someone, they hastily headed to the hospital to visit their son. When they saw their son's swollen face, they felt as if someone had stabbed them in their hearts. Oh my gosh! Son, who did this to you? Conroy's arm was in a cast, his leg was put in a sling, and his face was all bruised and swollen. When he saw his parents, he cried like a kid. Mom, Dad, you've got to help me. Someone bullied me. Emma asked, didn't you learn Taekwondo? How can you let others bully you? Conroy did not dare to tell his parents that it was his fault in the beginning, so he made up a story and shifted all the blame to Cameron. When his parents heard that their son got bullied because there were too many people on the other side, their faces sank. After all, their son was the apple of their eyes. It went without saying that they couldn't let the person who bullied their son get away with it. Thedius lowered his head, and his face was stern. He did not know the purpose of Waylon coming here, so he asked, I don't understand what you're talking about, Mr. Goldman. The one who got injured is my son. How could he have been hospitalized if it's his fault? Conroy had caused a lot of trouble in the past. He would always go around beating people up. Usually, Thedius would just need to apologize to the victim by giving them some money, and it would be over. 
However, the thing now was that the person who had gotten injured badly was his son, so he had to take his son's side. Waylon lifted his eyelids and said expressionlessly, You really do doubt on your son as rumored. Mr. Goldman, if you are here to help, shouldn't we be talking about how to bring the suspect who injured my son to justice? Mr. Selfridge, I think you've misunderstood something. Thedius was stunned. He did not know what Waylon was trying to say at all. Waylon ran his finger over the cup's rim and said indifferently, I've never said before that I'm here to help you and your son. Then what are you? Thedius was shocked. Your son was taught a lesson because he messed with the wrong person. I don't understand why you are making it sound like your son is the victim. Have you ever thought about what would happen to you and your family if he ever succeeded? A hint of coldness crossed Waylon's eyes. Thedius froze and was tongue-tied. Meanwhile, his phone rang. If you would excuse me, Thedius rose to his feet and went to the side to answer the call. The person on the other side of the line said something, and he was stunned. What did you say? I'm sorry, Mr. Selfridge, I can't help you. The Bouchers don't allow us to intervene in this matter. If we really help you, we can't afford the consequences. So, I'm sorry. We can't help you or your son. Without waiting for Thedius to say anything, the man hung up the call. Thedius still couldn't quite come around to his senses after answering the phone. He looked at Waylon, and then suddenly, a bad feeling rose from his stomach pit when he remembered those things that Waylon said. So that's the reason he came to visit me all of a sudden? Waylon seemed to be able to see through his mind, and the smile on his face faded away. You're thinking why the Bouchers wouldn't step in, right? Is it you? Thedius's face turned stern as he said, We have never offended the Goldmans before, so why are you doing this? Waylon picked up the cup, but did not drink the tea. It's true that neither you nor your family has offended the Goldmans before, but your son had the guts to lay his filthy finger on my people. Naturally, I have to help her. Thedius's body swayed, and his brain was a muddled mess right now. That woman is one of yours? Even if she isn't from my side, she isn't someone who you can afford to offend, Mr. Selfridge. Waylon put the cup on the table. He walked up to Thedius and said with a gloomy face, Cameron's father is Sonny Southern from the East Islands. I believe you've heard of Mr. Southern's name before, right? Chapter 2380 Cold beads of sweat were trickling down Thedius's back as he felt a chill. Up his spine. Sonny Southern. Everyone from his generation had heard of his name before. After all, they knew everything that happened to Titus Goldman. Even though Sonny was a generation younger than Titus, Sonny's reputation in Southeast Eurasia was comparable to that of Nolan's grandfather during those days. Waylon placed his hand on his shoulder and leaned closer. Besides, Cameron is my fiancé. Now, it's your son who had the guts to lay his fingers on her. Even if Mr. Southern is going to forgive you all, the Goldmans won't just sit back and watch. After he had finished speaking, Waylon left the living room with his men without turning his head back. Thedius could not come around to his senses even after a long time. His brain was a muddled mess right now. Initially, he assumed Cameron was just a nobody and that he could help his son to settle her easily. However, the truth was that his son had messed with the wrong people this time. Meanwhile, at the Black Gold, Minzy came up to the receptionist and told her that she wanted to see Waylon. However, the receptionist said, I'm sorry, Miss Holland, Mr. Goldman isn't in the office today. He isn't in the office today? Minzy frowned. The receptionist replied, yes. If you have something important, you can call him directly. Minzy had come to the company to look for Waylon several times. The receptionist treated her politely because she thought that she was in a relationship with Waylon. Minzy's face sank. She did not have Waylon's phone number. She pressed her lips tightly and said, It's okay. If he's busy, then I won't bother him. I'll wait for him to come back. Her consideration and gentleness had made the receptionist believe that she was having a relationship with Waylon. She smiled at her and said, Sure. Make yourself comfortable. However, Waylon was not going to return to the Black Gold Group. 
He had asked Leonardo to help him take care of the affairs in the company this morning. After he left the Selfridges residence, he headed back to Emperon. Cameron was cooking lunch in the kitchen. She purposely looked for tutorials on her phone. However, while she was reading the tutorials, she was so focused that she did not pay attention to the fire. As such, the food in the pan was burned. Oh my gosh! Cameron hastily turned off the fire. The burnt smell caused her to cough violently. The kitchen was filled with smoke. She was fumbling around blindly as she forgot to turn on the range hood. When Waylon entered the house, the smoke had invaded the living room. He could also catch a faint burning smell from the air. He frowned and rushed toward the kitchen without changing his shoes. Cameron. Cameron wanted to clean everything up before he came back, but her plan failed. She came out of the smoke. Perhaps she had stayed in the kitchen for a while, so her cheeks were oily and seemed a little bit black from the smoke. When she saw Waylon, she said straightly, I swear I didn't do it on purpose. Waylon did not know if he should be angry with her or not. So, it means that you want to blow my kitchen up? Cameron raised her hand to wipe her face and replied earnestly, Nope. I wasn't going to blow your kitchen up. I was cooking something but didn't know what was happening in that pan. The food just got burnt by itself. Waylon took off his jacket and threw it on the couch. Then, he went to open up all the windows. He unhurriedly rolled his sleeves up and walked into the kitchen to open the range hood. He looked at the burnt food in the pan and the mess on the table. Then, he turned to look at Cameron. Cameron averted her gaze. So you're saying that it's the food's fault that it got burnt? asked Waylon. She nodded without any hesitation. Waylon chuckled and squinted. Come here. Cameron swallowed hard. After hesitating for a moment, she walked over to him. What's the matter? Waylon pinched and caressed her cheek, causing her to look even more like a cat with oil stains on its face. How come I didn't realize that you're as shameless as I am?